Hello all, good evening and welcome to Grand Perio Masterclass. Good evening everybody and good to see you. So many people joining in so early in the evening, leaving all the IPL matches on the side. Thank you so much for joining us. Perio Masterclass is one concept which was lacking in India and it is the most ignored subject so far. As per I remember, for me, Perio was only scaling before I learned some good periodontics from Rajiv Chuttagipi sir few years back. Soft tissue is one of the most important aspect of Indian dentistry. Good evening, Dr. Uday. Good to see you. Good evening, good evening, Dr. Akshita. Glad to see you as, here as well. So I was coming. Perio is one aspect. Like before implantology for me, soft perio was only about scaling. But when later I realized the importance of soft tissue adjoining tooth structures, it's changed my view of dentistry. Despite I am working from last 15 to 20 years in private practice, still need to learn so many things in peri periodontics. I'll request you all before we start the session, please attend all the sessions thoroughly. Ask any question to the speakers because we this is current this program. Every speaker is giving his best shot. You are learning from the best people without paying a single penny. This is a humble request. Learn whatever you This is the best way. And now this is the future looking at the current circumstances in the COVID. This is the future of dentistry now. You have to learn online. And this is the best way. Today, before uh, we start, I would like to introduce Kumar Swami, sir. Please welcome and good evening, Kumar, sir. Thank you. Uh, he said does not need any introduction. Uh, you all, he is a very famous personality, not only in India, but uh, globally. He graduated from Government Dental College, Mumbai in the year 1979 and completed his post-graduation in periodontology in 1982. I was born during that time. So. Uh, he is one person who has brought perio aesthetics to India. Before that, nobody was knowing about periostatics. I am not going to give very long introduction because this is going to take another 30 minutes. So all over to you, sir. Please welcome and good evening, sir. Thank you. I would like to start with a prayer. Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Deva Maheshwara, Guru Sakshat Parabrahma, Tasmai Shri Guru Ve Namaha. Good evening, friends, and uh, thank you, Abhishek, for the wonderful introduction. And yes, you did uh, uh, listen to my request not to keep it long. Thank you. Friends, uh, this is very unique for me because uh, little did I realize that a day would arrive when uh, or at least uh, starting a Perio Masterclass, so beautifully conceived and structured by Rajiv Chitkupi. You know, during these difficult times, we have been yo-yoing on the intention to go back to our clinics. A few of you all have already have, a few never stopped, and a few are thinking whether to. Whoever and wherever you are, I'm glad that you are logged in today because being a periodontist, and all my teachers to whom I just prayed, they have believed and they have inculcated in me the spirit of understanding soft tissues and the importance of protecting the soft tissue, which protects the tooth in a way. So we are supposed to be the protectors of the protector. And is it easy? Well, the answer could be both yes and no. From the students who believed and trusted the teachers in the period class, be it third year or final year, and loved soft tissues and made sure that they attended every class, they finished their quota, and they did not need an extension during their internship days of period posting. Those are the ones who I'm sure will turn out to be those clinicians who love 
to protect the soft tissues and take care of them. For a few who did not find perio interesting enough, stimulating enough, and they decided to just cruise along other disciplines, which is fine. But when they started their own clinics, they probably hit a roadblock because they were seeking answers to a complex situation. And then they had to call in a periodontist. And during our times, there were very few visiting periodontists. I started as one, of course, one of the few breeds which are there. But today, a whole lot of breed of visiting periodontists have sprung up, which is good. At the same time, it depends on where you're practicing. And if you look at the reach of this webinar, it is beyond the metros, the tier two, the tier three, the tier four towns and cities. And that actually gladdens my heart because if you look at the necessity and the need for a clinician to understand perio, it is today, it is now. And through this masterclass, what we plan to do is to bring in various topics ranging from the basic diagnosis, treatment planning, non-surgical perio, surgical perio, the bone grafts, the type of pockets, the materials that you have today, the perio aesthetics, the minimally invasive, the whole range of topics is covered. And like Abhishek rightly mentioned, the faculty, and I'm glad here that there's a whole lot of young faculty which is going to come to you with their skill and knowledge. Because at some moment in time, we needed to pass on the baton. And I'm glad we are doing it. When I say we, I'm talking about the entire generation that in the 80s, mid 80s and 90s, took it upon themselves to enhance the perio skills of a clinician through courses, by holding the hand, to mentorship. So you have a whole new breed of periodontists, excellent clinicians in their own rights, coming through this course to you. And I'm sure you will all benefit through these lessons and presentations. My topic, Perio, the tent pole in clinical practice. I truly believe with evidence, mind you, that if at all there's a discipline which holds all the other clinical disciplines together, it is the discipline of periodontics. You look at an excellent restoration. You look at the interface between the restoration and the periodontal tissues. And you know that there is a dotted line and each one has to stick to the realm to ensure peaceful coexistence, be it perioprosto, a good perioendo management. You understand the perioesthetic value of a crown lengthening procedure. Need-based versus want-based perio treatment. And this is where the lecture that is coming after mine, Dr. Rajuchit Gupis, on perionomics is extremely important. You must be wondering, where is the economics in perio? And I'm glad he's going to speak to you or open this session up with that topic because I believe too, in perio, you don't have to sell. You have to tell. You have to tell the patient what he needs. You have to examine the tissues because in perio, there could be two or three different ways to look at it. A, the tissues themselves are saying something to the clinician. This is where your eye has to be keen to pick up that small sign which is evident if you take a close look. It could be hidden. You need to unearth it by walking the probe around. You also could land up in a situation where the perio tissues are telling you as a marker of a condition which is 
hidden systemically, which means a, a systemic condition is being portrayed and manifested orally through changes in architecture and texture of the periodontal tissues. It could be that because of a reaction to a drug usage, misusage or abuse that there could be alterations which could need attention. It could be a periodontal altering condition which has happened because of certain landmark situations in a woman or even age could be telling on few changes. It could be because of the loss in architecture, because of the infection, because of inflammation, wherein the tooth is rendered mobile and you or the patient is seeking intervention, fortunately at an early stage, or if he's not aware, because most of the time we know perio conditions do not cause pain and discomfort. So he sort of brushes it under the carpet, if you will, till such time that it gets too late and he comes running to you. Before all this happens, there's a huge gamut of possibilities in non-surgical perio. We were made to believe as students and the postgraduate students in Peru are also nowadays believing that surgery is the starting and the end point in Peru. I beg to differ. There's a whole lot of possibilities which can be done, a whole lot of conditions which can be treated by an approach called non-surgical Peru. Some people would like to call it chemotherapeutics in Peru because it could be a mouth rinse, a topical application or understanding some systemic conditions and controlling those to indirectly control the changes in periodontal tissues. When you look at perio as a discipline, it's extremely important that every patient who walks in at least gets counseled after due examination about his perio status. Very often we have seen that patients surrender themselves to us and they tell us, you tell me what to do and I'll get it done. And for some strange reason, maybe perioconomics will address this. We don't feel it compelling to convey to the patient the importance of a six monthly oral prophylaxis, or maybe we are not convincing enough to make the patient believe that he needs it. We also need to inform the patient that it is a cycle, plaque will accumulate, it will form despite the best measures that he adopts and it needs to be professionally cleaned and addressed. Because if perio is taken care of and there is enough scientific evidence to suggest that once periodontal tissues are healthy and the patients take care, most of the other aspects do not escalate in their gravity or deterioration, which again comes back to prove that if the pink is in the right place, if the pink is in the right hue, if a pink is prevented from getting on to becoming red, a lot of things can be controlled. And when we talk about that, it is important to understand the armamentarium that you may need to embark upon a period of procedure, the understanding that you may need of pharmacology, the conviction that you may need of sticking to a prescription which has not gone overboard and you don't believe in the OTC drugs and products more than your own skills because there's only a limitation that the OTC product will do. It is you, your instrumentation, be it an ultrasonic scaler or a hand scaler or a hand curette or a piezo-surgical instrument or surgical armamentarium. You need all of these. You cannot obviously start period treatment with a compromised 
instrumentation and armamentarium table. So just make sure that you have the right instruments. I would strongly encourage you to challenge every speaker on the topics and the presentation that he makes, because I'm sure any and every faculty around the globe would love to address an audience, in this case, an E audience, and make sure that all the queries are addressed to the best of the ability of the speaker. We also have a grand session coming your way. After every four sessions, we'll have a grand discussion forum, which will be scheduled on a Sunday. Uh, I will leave it to Abhishek and Anand to come to you with the details of the timing of that session. And we would like to have a round table discussion with these experts on the topics that they have covered. It will be like a recap and a refresher. All in all, it's going to be very exciting. And I, for one, am looking forward to this session because there's so much to be covered in Peru. There's so much to be understood. And the best part of Peru is there's a strong element of research happening even now as we speak and a whole lot of possibilities in Peru. I think with this preamble, I would have immense pleasure to introduce to you the next speaker, Dr. Rajiv Chitgupi. Uh, if uh, Abhishek can put Rajiv on the screen, please. Friends, Rajiv Chitgupi, uh, graduate and postgraduate of uh, GDC Mumbai. You know, Rajiv and uh, Shinivas, I remember. Brilliant Perio PGs of GDC Mumbai, contemporaries with an uh, immense bent of the research in their minds. And they came to me and they said that uh, they would like to, as you all know that I'm into counseling and helping students to go abroad. So they said that uh, we would like to uh, do our MS in USA. I said, sure. And after all the preparations, Rajiv decided, and I repeat, decided to stay back. Are we so glad that he decided to stay back? Because when I look at him, I don't think there's anybody currently in our country, and I can say that without any reservations, there's nobody in the country today who is so keen to supply information to us after duly squeezing out the data. He absorbs them like a sponge. He squeezes them out and he then relays it. In fact, Raju, I don't think you will believe me, but morning when I wake up, I look for your posts on Facebook and on WhatsApp on different groups. Because without any bias, and I believe for an independent researcher that Rajiv is, it's important that you cannot stay biased. You need to challenge every finding. You need to look and read between the lines of the conclusion that what he does best. And I'm so proud of you, Rajiv. In the true Guru Shishya Parampara, you are one who reach out to youngsters who reach out to the people who want to understand more, whether it's a current COVID situation or even about Perio, and you give them without holding anything back. Rajiv is a very good connection and link between the discipline of Perio and public health dentistry, what we used to call as community dentistry, because his responsibility or anybody's responsibility as a clinician should be to reach out not only to his professional brethren, but also to members of the public, which he does so efficiently and continuously. Friends, Rajiv and Perio are becoming synonymous in India, and that really gladdens our heart. So without much ado, please welcome Dr. Rajiv Chidgupi, and he as a chief mentor for the Perio Masterclass, will take you through every session and ensure that there are no queries left in your mind after the session. 
Thank you so much, Anand and Abhishek, for putting this together. I am extremely happy to be part of this Pay Your Master Class. And I also would like to pledge whatever I have towards this endeavor, which would go ahead and help every person who logs in and you as an admin. Thank you so much. Enjoy the class. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, sir, for the wonderful insight. And I will uh, no words for you too, because this Perio Masterclass is possible because of the efforts of you and Rajiv Chittagupi, sir. Thank you so much. Over to you, Rajiv, sir. It is all yours. Over here. Sir, your mic is mute. Sir, your mic is mute, Rajiv. Sir, your mic is mute. Okay. Thank you, Abhishek. Thank you, Anand. Most importantly, thank you, Kumar, sir. Thank you for this introduction. If there is one introduction that I want to remember for many, many years to come, it is going to be this. Not only for the feel-good factor, but for the thing that it is going to remind me of the responsibilities that, should, that I should keep on carrying for the benefit of most. And uh, I'll remember the wisdom that you have been giving to me for so many years. And also the way you summarize the entire philosophy of the master's class. I'll try my best to keep it to the best of its standards in the coming, uh, coming sessions also. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Coming to the lecture. OK, today I'm going to speak on Perionomics. Perionomics is my original concept. To tell the truth, there is nothing called as originality in this world. Everybody is inspired by somebody. There are already very solid scientific concepts laid down. We make use of them and we mix them to address one specific problem that uh, the world needs solution for. So Perionomics is something I created to help everybody, dentists as well as the patients. And uh, it is not built out of any hypothesis. It is it has come out of my own experience. I did uh, extensive perio consulting for many, many years in Mumbai, visited a lot of clinics and based on my experience and based on my own hypothesis testing. I created this concept of perionomics in the year 2013. I got I received the copyright for this concept. And after that, I have taken this concept to every nook and corner, every corner of India, and I've educated maximum people on perionomics. And uh, I keep hearing stories from a lot of dentists, even now, that we heard this lecture many years ago, and after, after we started applying it in our practice, there has been a big turnaround, and we find it very, very easy and a lot rewarding, not only for us, and even the patient, you know, even our patients like the whole way, the, the way the whole perio thing is, being applied in our practice. So today the whole idea is to make perionomics simplified and applicable to all of you so that from tomorrow morning itself, you can start applying it in your practice. OK, so let us identify what makes patients take their decision when it comes to periodontal treatments. OK, so, so for all of us, periodontal status is important because we are dentists, we are periodontists. And for all of us, periodontal diseases and periodontal treatments are important. That is our story. But the question is, is perio important to our patients? Are periodontal diseases so important to them? Because there are many more diseases, many more glamorous diseases, what you can say, you know, much more, which are much more famous or rather infamous. It could be, it could be stroke, cerebrovascular accident, you know, hypertension, it could be. Uh, heart failure, it could be diabetes mellitus. There are a lot of other diseases. Out of all this, out of all the bigger risks, lifestyle problems a patient has to undergo, how much importance does he give to perio? That is the ultimate question. So the question is, does it affect the quality of life? Does periodontal disease affect the quality of life? If the patient has gone through some difficulty because of periodontal diseases, he will realize the importance of periodontal treatment. So first we must understand, does periodontal disease affect the quality of life? 
and there is no point in taking opinions we need data from studies so i am quoting one great study in this regard journal of clinical periodontology 2004 which concluded that periodontal status does have an impact on the quality of life it means it has to affect somebody either the person is not able to chew from that side because the teeth are mobile or his smile is affected so either way aesthetics or function in one or the other way periodontal disease affects the quality of life the person may ignore it for some time but he has made those compromises in his lifestyle in his own function one thing is sure it affects and when it affects more the impact is more when the pocket depth is let me take the laser pointer okay the impact is greater when the probing pocket depth ppd some part sir, is hidden here sir, what is sorry to here? interrupt you sorry to interrupt you sir please uh, screen sharing you have to do the screen sharing you have not done i've not done i've not done no okay just a minute Anyway, it was, I was just on the first slide. Okay. Doesn't matter. Yes. Is it visible now? So it's just yes, the sir. first slide. I was, I was still now talking on this, start talking about this, periodonomics. So this is the first slide. So the topic I was talking about is quality of life. For us, period is important, but whether it is important for the patients, any disease becomes critical or important for a patient when it affects their quality of life. And if you look at the study, Journal of Clinical Periodontology 2004, it definitely says that periodontal status does have an impact on the quality of life. And this impact is more when the probing pocket depth, PPD, is greater than 5 millimeters. Remember this benchmark. 5 millimeter benchmark is the number that we use in deciding which patient will go for surgery and which patient can be taken for non-surgical uh, periodontal treatment. So the rule is, if the pocket depth is greater than five millimeters, then the patient may require flap surgery. Why? Because no matter how dexterous, no matter how skilled the dentist or the periodontist is, his reach and his effective, effectiveness of the treatment can be up to five millimeters only beyond five millimeters the results are not reliable the outcome is not predictable that's why in pockets deeper than five millimeters we have to go for flap surgeries okay so does it mean today a patient comes to you and you measure the pocket depth and the pocket depth is seven millimeters directly you do the surgery no fine this is what we are going to learn today how to apply this five millimeter rule Okay, so in that, the first rule I'm telling you is periodontal disease does impact the quality of life. And this impact is much greater when the pocket depth is greater than five millimeters. So five millimeters is the one that decides the quality of life and is also the one that decides which patient will go for flap surgery. Fine. All right. Next. So for any periodontal treatment, we know that we have got three components. First is professional active debridement, what the dentist or the periodontist does in the clinic. Okay. So earlier we used to call it scaling. There was also something called as root planing. There is something also called as curatage. Curatage we don't do for everybody. Curatage is something we don't do. And I'm not telling you something new. It's a very, very old concept. Okay. It has been more than, it has been almost two decades now that we don't use the term curatage, okay? Or do we have an alternate term for it? No, the curatage concept itself is gone. You don't have to do any curating of the soft tissues. You just remove whatever is present on the root surface and the tissue heals on its own. You don't have to teach the tissues how to heal. They already know. You just have to rem remove whatever has accumulated there, the local factors. It could be plaque or calculus. You remove it and healing takes place on its own. So what we have to do is debridement. So the current term you, you used is debridement. All you have to do is debridement. Use it. Use the term debridement. It covers everything. Scaling, root planning, curatage, everything comes under this only. So professional active debridement. In simpler term, 
ultrasonic scaling that is the gold standard okay so this is one part second part is home care you have to improve home care that multiplies the clinical results that you have given through your treatment third is frequent maintenance visits this is your return on investment the biggest roi is frequent maintenance visits the most ignored part everybody in dentistry considers himself as an ambassador of disease control we have forgotten that we are promoters we should be promoting health promotion we, are, we should be ambassadors of health promotion because health promotion is much bigger revenue generating mod module because we have occupied only disease control there are other industries who are focusing on health promotion big time gym spa parlor what are they they are all health promotion they improve the quality of life and that is much easier so we have forgotten this simple rule was this rule told to you yes this rule was told to you when in your third bds in community dentistry all your subjects teach you science there is one subject that teaches you business that is community dentistry most underutilized most underestimated subject the problem is community dentistry is taught in such a way that everybody solves the mcq saq laq and passes pass the examination the true potential has not come out only today i am telling you just one concept of a community dentistry that is health promotion so use health promotion in your practice least effort maximum rewards and you don't have to convince patients okay so let us move ahead so what is professional active therapy non surgical treatment and surgical treatment and everybody tries to focus on surgical periodontal treatment non surgical periodontal therapy is much easier gives almost the same results and much more rewarding this i understood after doing a few years of consulting you need real world experience this is what i got after i finished my mds from gdc and went out and i started consulting everywhere so periodontics is Uh, a synthesis a concept synthesized out of my own experience which i have tried for so many years and it has worked so beautifully and everybody can start applying in your own practice from tomorrow so why did i design this concept what is the statement of problem i finished my mds in 2002 started consulting went out and met a lot of friends went to their clinics and i told them that i finished my mds in perio give me perio patients i want to treat their periodontal diseases and everybody says periodontal diseases there is nothing called as periodontal diseases and there is nothing called as a perio patient we hardly have any perio patients here i said how is it possible throughout my mds i have learned that india is full of periodontal patients a lot of perio diseases are there and you are saying that there are no perio patients how is it possible i realized that some some somewhere something is going wrong some wrong connect is being established with the patients so i had to identify where was the mistake being done when i analyzed a lot of practices when i met a lot of dent dentists dental practitioners who already had a perio consultant coming to them and i analyzed how they try to convince their patients for perio i realized one mistake everybody was doing the mistake was this everybody was equating periodontal treatment or a consulting periodontist's role equal to doing flap surgeries is it the truth no is perio treatment equal to flap surgeries should a perio consultant's main role be equal and equal to doing flap surgeries no there is no need to stress so much on flap surgery in fact as you learn today the day you stop convincing patients for flap surgery your practice will flourish whose practice a general dentist practice as well as a perio consultant's practice both will flourish this is what i have seen validated by a lot of people whom i used to go and do surgeries at fine where does it all boil down to it comes down to this all patients make their decisions based on certain emotional and psychological aspects so you need to understand emotional and psychological aspects of decision making ultimately it's a decision whether to undergo a treatment 
suggested by the dentist or to deny the treatment or delay the treatment okay either somebody accepts it delays it or denies it three possibilities all these three three things come out of emotional and psychological decision making there are a lot of books on this aspect one of the most famous books books is this daniel goldman's emotional intelligence why emotional quotient matters more than intelligence quotient eq matters more than iq this book says one simple rule we use our emotional brain 24 times more than we use our rational brain what does it mean it means if you are taking 24 minutes to convince somebody by you know trying to convince him through connecting with his iq it is better to connect with his eq because there you will require only 1 minute people try too much to convince their patients with science does it help no people are not using their logic in making their decisions most decisions are taken emotionally that's why i said emotional psychological and intuitive aspects of decision making so let us understand how we can connect with the emotional brain of the patient and do good for him okay the whole philosophy of perionomics is to make things simpler for the patient not to make it difficult for the patient don't try to connect with his iq and don't make things difficult for him okay so let us see how we can make there are many other people who have spoken on the same thing bill blatchford again practice guru in usa many other books descartes error talks about the same thing human emotions now come to our medical journals oncologist year 2010 a great article what does it say people's decisions are often influenced not only by their perceptions of cost and benefits but also by subtle contextual factors that trigger intuitive and emotional decision processes understand this this holds good even for cancer patients so they must be applicable they must be applicable to a greater extent in our dental practice so it is not about cost and benefit we always talk about cost and benefit patients don't look at this their decision making is always by this that is the reason why there are some dentists who are able to make their patients say yes for much costlier treatment and the same patient had said no to somebody else where the treatment cost was much lower so it is not about cost and benefit there is something else that is working so this article how patients make health care decisions this is a very critical question that we need to understand and address another article journal of american medical association 1993 understanding patients decisions cognitive and emotional perspectives everything depends on how a problem is framed how you frame a problem how you connect with your patient let us understand how it applies to periodontics so what do most practitioners say they describe the entire clinical situation they also show the opg they draw a few lines on the opg and they say there is some bone loss and there are pockets and you need surgery and there is a consultant who comes and the cost will be around 20 to 30000 rupees this connected phrases this statement is something that scares the patient away he doesn't get the depth of what you are telling you are absolutely correct from scientific point of view you are trying to connect with his logic with his iq but the problem is he doesn't take his decisions from his iq he takes his decisions from eq so where are we going wrong even after being correct scientifically even after being correct logically and even after trying to connect with his iq the problem is multifold first of all the perio problem he has doesn't give him any pain periodontal periodontal problems are known for being painless and for that you are suggesting surgery surgery the word itself gives a feeling of pain nobody wants to undergo surgery forget patients no doctor or dentist wants to undergo surgery not surgery nobody even wants to take an la and we want our patients to accept surgery happily so this is the first problem second problem word surgery induces pain as well as fear forget surgery even dentistry induces fear 
dentistry comes in top five fears of the world fear of height fear of fire fear of snakes fear of isolation and fear of dentistry so we are in top five fears it takes a lot for a patient to come to a clinic for a periodontal problem for which he has no pain and suddenly you tell him surgery does he like it no so this is the reason why most of the patients refuse the treatment when you suggest flap surgery third problem every patient thinks dentistry is expensive dentists don't agree to him but this is patient's problem that's why he doesn't say yes dentistry is expensive surgeries are also expensive fear pain plus cost there can't be a more scary combination fear pain and cost you are telling him all three together so we need to modify our statement let us see how we can modify fourth a lot of patients come to a dentist because they know that dentist there is a personal connect and you are suggesting a specialist will come he will do a surgery and it will cost over 25 to 30 thousand rupees for some problem which they were dragging on for so many years that is the reason why they say no so these are four problems because of which patients say no to the treatment suggested that is flap surgery suggested so this is our problem so why are we doing this is it because patient says no and we lose that patient and we lose that income is finance the only thing on our mind no the main reason why i created periodomics was this even after doing the correct diagnosis even after suggesting the correct treatment patients were saying no to the treatment so what are we achieving we are letting our patients go back and we are letting them continue with the same disease for a few more months or years this is the problem that i wanted to address this is the problem i wanted to solve that's why I designed Perionomics. This is my seventh year of Perionomics as a word. But in principle, in practice, I have almost practiced Perionomics for more than 12, 13 years successfully. A lot of patients and people who have learned from me, they have also practiced it. And it is very, very easy. Let us identify what we are doing. This is the main theme of Perionomics don't try to convince your patients for surgery there is no need to convince as kumar sir introduced the concept of periodomics i'm telling the same thing there is no need to convince there is no need to sell you have to just tell him what he requires so don't struggle don't fight hard to convince him for surgery then what is the other option just recruit him for non-surgical period that's it so instead of telling you have periodontitis and you require flap surgery what you should be telling is you have periodontal disease and you require periodontal treatment can we improvise upon this yes i'm telling you something that acted like the what you can say which played the main role in creating this concept of periodomics. Daniel Kahneman, he, he writes about thinking. Okay, thinking fast and slow is one of his books, very famous books. He tells you how to think about thinking. And if you see, this is something, this is my old Facebook photo. Okay, this is something I posted before I created periodomics. Okay. So what, what does it, what does he say? Kahneman principle investors are more affected by changes in wealth than by the wealth itself. So whatever shows difference. Okay. And they are very sensitive to the way information is presented to them. Okay. So change in wealth, relative difference in the wealth is the driver for a decision rather than the absolute wealth. That's why if you see almost all offers, almost all advertisements are save 30%, save 37%, save 40%. They all show relative difference. So everybody gives options. So the moment you say you have an option of saving some money, they choose a, a product and they buy it. That's why people, in order to save 30,000 rupees, end up spending 3 lakh rupees and buy something which they may not need also. I've used this principle here. Which principle? 
by default everybody has two options so you tell a patient just surgery he creates his own option he compares it with no surgery you are telling him surgery he creates one more option so he is comparing between surgery and no surgery and he chooses no surgery so how you can overcome this problem you yourself give him two options and show the difference you can make to his life how let me explain it first consulting first day of your consulting with the with any patient is very very critical a perio patient okay so i have two options now i told you that uttering the word surgery is very bad it is scaring the patients away so i should not utter the word surgery at all this is my first option i have one more option can i make use of the word surgery and create an option for the patient show him relative difference yes and this is something i use in my practice what do i say i always tell my patient you have periodontal disease for which you have gum disease for which you have two types of treatments first is surgery for which you will be requiring anesthetic injection we will open your gums clean everything put it back you will receive stitches and after a week we will be removing the stitches and the cost will be 25 to 30000 rupees so i have given him an honest picture how surgery works then i tell him you also have another option where you don't have to take anesthetic injections you have you don't have to undergo surgery you don't need stitches and you don't have to spend 25 to 30000 rupees all you need to do is come once a month three sittings one sitting every month and every time you may have to pay me around 2000 rupees so what is happening here the total cost that comes will be about 6000 rupees usually i take three rounds of scaling if it's a periodontitis periodontitis case one sitting every month so how much is he spending 6000 rupees maybe after that a sextant may require flap surgery i will tell you how to solve that problem as well so where is 30000 rupees and where is 6000 or 10000 rupees we are actually reducing a lot of problems the patient would have had otherwise so i use the second principle using kahneman principle and give two options to the patient either undergo surgery or you have you have a non surgical options also the moment i say that i can give the same result with non surgery patient understands the conviction i have in my own treatment he understands that i am concerned about my patient it gives me an instant connect with my patient and it builds a lot of confidence and i always tell my patient so you have got two options one is surgery the other one is non surgery you can go home you can think you can come back and tell me your decision and what is the answer he what answer does he give me every time he says doctor what is there to think and come back the decision is made non surgical start the treatment today in all my cases no patient goes back home to think decision is made then and there and i start non surgical treatment then and there 100% acceptance of the treatment plan they say yes to non surgical are we telling anything wrong no this is the principle of perio you have to start every case non surgically and only those cases which don't respond to non surgical non surgical perio will be taken for surgical this is the principle of perio what are we doing we are using the same principle but we are connecting with patient's eq rather than his logical iq so we are absolutely scientific and we are connecting with the patient the right way we are preventing unnecessary surgery and we are reducing his cost and what will happen lot more patients will say yes so the numbers will make up for the cost a lot of patients get benefited a lot of them will undergo the treatment we will reduce a lot of community disease burden and we build our own practice as well so it's a win win situation for both dentist the periodontist and the patient as well so the rule is recruit patients for non surgical periodontics what is non surgical periodontics hand scalers gracie curates no 
gold standard is very simple ultrasonic scaling something that is not done in ug something that is not taught in pg so education is all about ug or pg is all about all things other than ultrasonic scaling and the moment you can enter clinical practice it's all about ultrasonic scaling okay so ultrasonic scaling is the gold standard there are amazing tips great designs they can reach any part okay and they give you the best results the same results what you can achieve with hand scaling all right so you can use the same tip interproximally and buccally this is something very very important in perio especially in aesthetics tissue response is different interproximally tissue response is different midfacially and you can see the length of the ultrasonic tip that has gone inside to do scaling these are very very deep pockets okay if i tell this patient you undergo surgery he will run away i can just recruit this patient for non surgical treatment and do beautiful subgingival debridement okay and i can give him beautiful results so what happens after i do three rounds of non surgical treatment in many many cases i get 100% treatment pockets reduce bleeding stops patient comes to know that his spongy gums have resolved gums are firm now there is no bleeding and obviously many patients will tell you that even the breath has improved they have regained that fresh fresh breath this happens in many cases they get 100% of results at the same time there are some patients who feel that even after undergoing two three rounds of scaling they have not got any benefit okay i will tell you which are those cases most of the cases what happens is in their mouth mouth out of the six extents 75 to 80% of the mouth gets relief with three three rounds of non surgical treatment there will be one or two extents left which may require flap surgery which you can suggest later after doing three rounds so it is the fourth round when you make this decision so first three rounds you have done scaling fourth round when you make the full full mouth assessment that time you will come to know which are the areas where the pocket depth is still deeper than 5 mm that is where you suggest him additional treatment that is flap surgery okay so i will come to this part first part is clear there are many cases which resolve 100% what are these cases even after doing multiple rounds of scaling they don't resolve these are the cases which are these permitted gingivitis cases non plaque induced lesions so periodontal diseases so for a practitioner what is important whether it is gingivitis or periodontitis ultimately you are going to start with ultrasonic scaler only so for a practitioner the classification of periodontal diseases is plaque induced periodontal disease non plaque induced periodontal disease and then within plaque induced periodontal disease whether it is non surgical periodontal disease or surgical periodontal disease this is how a practitioner should see academically research wise new classification i can talk about the new classification for 2 hours that is not the question i am trying to make the whole thing easier for practitioners for practitioners the classification of periodontal diseases is first whether it is plaque induced or non plaque induced and then if it is plaque induced whether it is surgical or non surgical that's it so what are we talking about we are talking about non surgical or non plaque induced non plaque induced periodontal disease these are all your lichen planus pemphigoid pemphigus those type of diseases okay the gums are not looking normal they are fiery red and the patient usually complains of burning on eating spicy food all these patients require corticosteroids because this is autoimmune it is the immunity that has overacted you have to suppress it so you need immunosuppression topical immunosuppression that is your topical corticosteroid there are a lot of products available in the market we have got kenacort we have got tes and we have got trioplast trioplast is different from kenacort and tes in such a way that it also has a plaster so trio is triamcinolone oplast is oral plaster so 
whatever you apply it stays in the same area so all those cases where if you have done three rounds of scaling and even after that he has not responded it means what it is not plaque induced disease it is non plaque induced disease and in all those cases you require topical steroids okay so how to identify these cases these cases are usually middle aged females post menopausal and you ask them one question do your gums burn when you have any food especially as spicy food if the answer is yes it is non plaque induced periodontal disease in other words discomitive gingivitis you need to give them topical corticosteroids all of them have the same molecule triamcinolone acetonide okay you can take a picture of this slide i have seen a lot of practitioners going wrong they do keep on doing multiple rounds of scaling but where they go wrong is they are not able to separate plaque induced disease from non non plaque induced disease this is non plaque induced disease and my periodomics concept is for plaque induced diseases so in plaque induced diseases first you do non surgical treatment and in only those areas where it does not respond you do surgical so if you send 10 patients to a dentist who does conventional practice what is he tries to convince every patient for flap surgery and a dentist who applies periodomics you send 10 different patients to this guy this is what you get in conventional practice eight at least eight patients okay i have used pareto's principle world works by 20 is to 80 way so it is 20% of patients who make 80 20% of people who make 80% of difference in the world okay just like in any city 20% of practices enjoy 80% of practice and 20% of clinics enjoy 80% of practice or in any practice even you must have realized on any given day 20% of your patients would have contributed to 80% of your earnings okay similarly in conventional practice out of 10 patients if you try to convince them for flap surgery eight patients will reject two patients will accept and if you calculate six sextants in each patient you will end up doing 12 sextants flap surgery and 48 sextants of these eight patients they go back home untreated this is not good neither rewarding nor justice done instead if you apply periodomics in my experience all 10 patients say yes but because we have applied pareto principle let us apply pareto principle here also suppose two patients reject this plan as well and eight patients say yes out of these eight patients you are getting six sextants in each you are going to do 48 sextants three rounds of non surgical treatment that is practice that is perio practice and in in these eight patients if you have got about two sextants in each for surgery and if you are able to do that you will end up doing 16 sextants of surgery this is bonus okay this is bonus and if you are able to do this you will be actually doing more sextants surgery than this person who was trying to do surgery so what does it say you are trying to avoid surgery but in the end you will end up doing more surgeries this is what happened in my practice i thought i thought i'll be doing very few number of surgeries but i used to do more number of surgeries not full mouth there is nothing called as full mouth flap surgery that whole thing disappeared after i started apply applying periodomics so the whole picture turned to a scenario where patients used to have either one sextant or two sextants only and these simple sextant surgeries used to take about 20 minutes so not long surgeries less trauma patients are more comfortable patients start liking dentistry that's how you are contributing to the industry as well and it becomes win win for everybody so most of your patients are going to be these after doing three rounds of scaling when you do check up in the fourth round 75 to 80% of their mouth would have shown resolution and what about the remaining one to two sextants you suggest them that four sextants have improved very well but there are two more areas which require additional treatment where we may have to open the gums and clean by then the patient has already seen the results that you have given the chances of acceptance are very very high 
so there are patients who may say yes immediately very good take them for surgery some patients may say we will come later a lot of my patients come later because of financial reasons or any other thing to make up their mind okay fine let them come later there there are patients who say no you had told us in the beginning that you will give results non surgically why are you suggesting surgically nobody says like this even if somebody says and refuses to under even if he refuses to undergo surgical treatment no problem you have already controlled the disease burden with excellent non surgical periodontics you have done so much of perio so there is a huge patient base that is waiting to get periodontal diseases treated it is we who are trying to convince and convert them into flap surgery which is not required in fact in one of my talks when i said there is no need to convince patients for flap surgery a periodontist stood up and asked sir why are you telling like this we should be convincing patients for surgery as a periodontist you are telling not to do flap surgery aren't we doing any aren't we doing some mistake in this i said you have set a very wrong benchmark for your practice being a periodontist your challenge should not be flap surgery your challenge should be doing minimally invasive aesthetic surgeries smile designs trying to introduce more and more aesthetics in implant therapy reconstructive surgery that is where we belong creating something that is not required like trying to convince patients for flap surgery we are reducing our own benchmark and we are unnecessarily making things difficult for our patients also make it easier for everybody do non surgical perio and whatever area does not respond only those areas you do surgery this is exactly what perio science says if the patient says yes for surgery go ahead and do if the patient says no keep continue keep doing non surgical perio rounds a lot of non non surgical perio patients keep coming back again and again that is what i said this is what i told you this is what i meant by maintenance um, follow up treatments biggest return on investment comes through maintenance therapy supportive periodontal therapy or follow up therapy all right so when you take more and more patients this is your practice pyramid practice pyramid is another concept of mine your practice builds by five layers a b c d e a is appearance dentistry people are ready to pay anything they want anything you want for improvement in their appearance okay but these the number of these patients is less that's why it's a small part on top then comes b b is bite bite is functional dentistry okay full mouth rehabilitation of course appearance and bite function both have to be in harmony with each other c is condition condition of teeth condition of gums condition of bone etc d is diseases this is where you got periodontal diseases periapical diseases pulpal diseases perio pericoronal diseases all diseases come here and e is empirical okay or elementary this is your maintenance keeping a healthy patient healthy comes here this is where maximum patients can fit in okay so all top practices all top practices in the world focus on appearance and bite and directly follow up okay so all those practices which are doing very very well which are only 20% of practices they focus on a appearance b bite and e that is empirical or elementary 80% of practices are doing only this condition and disease condition and disease this is where all the saturation is so if you want to change your practice either move upwards or come downwards or do both a b and e as long as you remain stuck in these two levels you are going to feel the heat of saturation all right it is not the main area of my today's topic but it came as a relevant part so periodontics will help you include more and more patients at the bottom of your pyramid these are the same patients who have built a lot of trust in your practice and these are the ones who will go on climbing up and up and after some years these are the people who will say yes to your appearance dentistry as well 
okay some other day when i have more time i'll describe practice pyramid also it will make your entire practice setup much easier okay so this is the last slide what perionomics says is don't focus only on disease control okay we are trying to create a paradigm shift don't try to sell the treatment don't try to convince your patient okay tell them honestly give them the right treatment non surgical treatment start with non surgical most of them get well with that only those who continue to suffer in one or two sections they you suggest okay and change the focus of your practice from disease control to health promotion this is where maximum growth maximum rewards are okay so you can connect me on social media everywhere my handle is the same facebook twitter youtube or instagram chitgupi c h i t g u p i this is the handle common handle that i have everywhere if you have if you want to follow my other articles you are most welcome to my research gate page okay i can see 50 more than 57000 reads have come out of this more than 50000 reads have come in the last 6 months only because of the research i have done on covid that brings to the end of my lecture what is the time i hope uh it is 10 5 i think i took only 5 minutes more that brings me to the end of this lecture hope i conveyed the message in the right way and you have got the gist of this periodonomics concept thank you so much over to you abhishek thank you so much sir for the wonderful insight i have personally viewed this and implemented periodonomics in my practice from last so many years and not only it has regained the patient confidence back but also it has increased the revenue in my practice many folds i remember yes. when you were in jammu uh, for we, we attended your course and that was the turning point before that for me perio was only scaling and that also after every 6 months okay. but after that things changed and we started implementing it and we are getting good results great yes so we have few questions if you have some five more minutes then i'll request you to answer it oh yes i have time okay the first question is from uh, sir emmanuel how frequent visits should be and does it depend on severity of patient condition okay a very good uh, question how frequently you should do scaling is a question that is addressed by there is something called as cochrane systemic review cochrane systemic review is considered as the systematic review is considered as the highest level of evidence they keep they have addressed this question on multiple occasions and every time they have said that there is no uh, default rule that you should do scaling after 3 months you should do scaling after 6 months there is no fixed rule there is no fixed timeline for that so using that evidence what i have done in my perio consulting is i call my perio patients for check up after 3 months call them for check up after 3 months they come to you four times a year just for check up and whenever you think that the tissues are inflamed when you think the tissues require treatment that time you do ultrasonic scaling so patient comes every third month doesn't mean you have to do scaling every third month so it is absolutely tissue response based not random timeline based uh, next question is from meena prabhu though it is not related to today's topic but you are the best person to answer it is it safe to do ultrasonic scaling in covid scenarios i have put a lot of evidence that is available on ultrasonic scaling and aerosol generating procedures you should understand the um, the history how aeros dental aerosols were considered dangerous 2003 when we had the first sars that time they assessed different aerosols and they clubbed everything that was generating aerosols so aerosols are mainly the respiratory droplets that come out and along with that whatever aerosols gen get generated so the aerosols that come out of our acts of sneezing coughing and talking while we speak those aerosols plus the aerosols aerosols that get generated during medical aerosol me medical procedures those which manipulate the respiratory system so medical aerosol procedures and natural acts which generate aerosols they are the ones that have maximum risk dental aerosol procedures most of the aerosol is the water that is coming out of your dental into water line so till now nobody has shown live virus or virion in the dental aerosol 
and till now we have not found any clusters where a lot of patients got infected because they got treated under in a dental clinic that's why if you go to the cdc website the centers for disease control and prevention they have not said dental aerosol procedures are contraindicated they say you can do dental aerosol procedures which includes three way syringe air rotors and ultrasonic scalers provided you do both both sides personal protective equipment as well as environmental control like laminar air flow and uh, you know air circulation air changes per hour all those things as long as they are done you are safe to go but if you are really worried that there is some unknown risk there is some unknown fear inside you it's fine patients who come to you wherever they have got heavy chunks of calculus you can do with hand scaling and call them again once the whole fear is gone and you have conclusive evidence that dental aerosols are so this fear and this risk appetite is very very subjective somebody may be you know a bigger daredevil and somebody might be very very cautious so my advice is not going to help you much it is ultimately your decision it is going to be very very subjective so somebody may get convinced by my words which said that till now virions have not been demonstrated and the statement that dental aerosols are risky have come out of very very weak evidence of 2003 somebody may get convinced by this and he may start doing dental aerosol procedures and while some people may still remain cautious both are okay so if you are really scared of ultrasonic scalers you can do hand scaling you remove those heavy chunks of calculus and keep calling the patient again and again multiple visits no problem with that and if you really want to reduce the uh, uh, risk even more you can give a mouthwash like clorexidin which has got substantivity which which is which has shown to reduce the viral load for 2 hours and if you want to increase its effect you can give the mouthwash again after 30 minutes so suppose the patient is going to be in your clinic for 1 hour you make the patient rinse with clorexidin every 15 minutes so it keeps on reducing the viral load again and again will be a boon if you are if you have any yeah. doubt in your mind right yes uh, next question from priti rawat steroids cream should be used for how many days sir steroids don't steroid creams they don't uh, cure cure the problem the problem is immunogenetic it is the immune system so we are only treating the symptoms patient is very uncomfortable because the gums are burning so you you suppress the symptoms you give him one tube ask him to apply twice daily or thrice daily and he will continue with that tube till the symptoms subside once the symptoms are gone he need not continue with the same tube and and it's cyclical the same symptoms may come back after many months or years that time again you can give him steroid cream so it's not a lifelong uh, application it is purely again based on symptom severity there are plenty of questions but i am sure they will be answered in the upcoming webinars uh, by the various speakers at as all the topics will be covered uh, yeah. rajesh sir has designed this program in collaboration with perio india in a very meticulous way and i am sure it will we are going to get all the answers last question which i am going to ask is from dr sachin any medications you prescribe along with ultrasonic deep scaling for the first three settings uh ultrasonic scaling when you are doing most of the cases respond only with mechanical treatment just by doing mechanical removal of plaque and calculus i will tell you some of the top periodontists how they work globally so whenever a perio patient comes first round of scaling is done by the hygienist suppose the patient has 100 sites inside the mouth first round of scaling reduces those 100 sites into 50 sites so 50 sites become all right with first round of scaling now what to do with the 50 remaining sites now the dentist does the checkup and he starts his own treatment now the dentist is doing the second round he does full mouth thorough debridement and he does this checkup now he finds that out of the remaining 50 sites 30 have become all right 20 are still remaining now he doesn't know first round is done by the hygienist second i have done everything what is wrong so he calls the periodontist periodontist comes and checks he does his own charting okay attachment loss pocket depth everything he does his own subgingival debridement subgingival and wherever he requires root planing he does that and then when he does the assessment 
he finds that there are about 10% of sites which still have deep pockets and bleeding. Now he thinks hygienist did first round of scaling, dentist did the second round of scaling, I did my third round of scaling. They have done everything. Why are still 10% sites remaining and that have not responded? What is wrong inside? This curiosity leads him to open the flap. So flap surgery is not something that you do on the first sitting after doing three rounds when there are questions which have not answered you. That curiosity should lead you to open the flap that improves the accessibility and visibility. Then you will see that, oh, these are the areas which I had missed in my non physical treatment. Then you remove it with your ultrasonic, ultrasonic scaling after opening the flap. That is flap surgery. And after doing all this cleaning, if you realize that there are some bony defects, you put some graft, you cover it with the membrane and then you close. OK, now everything has been done. Non-surgical treatment, surgical treatment. Now, ideally, the person should respond 100%. But now the periodontist is in some big surprise. Even after doing everything, there are about 5% sites which are not responded. Now he thinks. Even after doing everything, why are 5% sites not responding? Should I give antibiotics? This is where antibiotics come, not in the first sitting. So as soon as the patient comes, don't give him the, that default list of five prescriptions. Amoxicillin, metronidazole combination directly in the first sitting, not required. First do mechanical ultrasonic scaling. It solves most of your problems. When nothing works, when you suspect that something is wrong systemically, which only an, an antibiotic can go through the blood and reach the microorganisms. That is when you prescribe antibiotics. Of course, antibiotics will be a separate topic which will be covered in one of the subsequent sessions. Yes. Hope I answered that question. Perfectly yeah. answered, sir. Thank you so much. Many doubts clears. Any and many no more curiosities are there among the people. They will be answered in the upcoming webinars. Next yes. webinar will be on diagnosis in periodontics that will be a very important topic and will be covered by dr vinayak and we are eagerly waiting for that on next wednesday same time thank you rajiv sir for your valuable time and great planning for this webinar thank you so much sir thank you abhishek thank you world dental association and thank you all the viewers who attended in large numbers thank you so much good night bye bye see you next wednesday sir bye bye you all